So I'm back with another Oliver, stop. I'm recording. Hi guys. So I'm back with another um, writer reviews video and this one I'm going to be reviewing the Hulu um, TV show called High Fidelity. Um, now here's a huge disclaimer. I did not know that this was previously a movie before it was a TV show, um, movie of the same name. I just found out that literally like two minutes ago when I just like um, googled some information to refresh myself about the show. So it was originally a book and movie by Nick Hornby. Um, Nick Hornby is an amazing writer by the way. He did um, Fever Pitch, he did A Long Way Down which I um, I really liked, along, I won't say love, but I really liked A Long Way Down. Um, it's a movie about the people that are going to like jump off the roof. Um, they all meet each other and they're previously strangers and yada yada yada. It's a really well done movie in my opinion. So check it out if you haven't. It, I saw it on Netflix a few years ago, so it may still be on there. But anyway, um, so High Fidelity is by Nick Hornby and actually Lisa Bonet starred as the main character in the original High Fidelity, which I think is really awesome and really cool. And just a really cool like continuation that her daughter Zoe Kravitz is the main character, Robin or Rob, in the TV show adaptation. So that's actually a really cool fun fact that I didn't even know before watching the show. And had I known that, um, one, that it was a movie and two, two that um, her mother played in the original, it probably would have um, changed my perspective a little bit when the show going into it. Um, but I'm just going to go off of like what I felt and thought when I originally binge watched the show probably a month or two ago. So it's been a while. So a lot of my opinions have simmered down. And like I said, I just kind of like read through the plot again to refresh myself, make sure I like put over the key points. Um, so let's get into this writer review. So. Um, Zoe Kravitz plays this girl called Robin Brooks or Rob. She typically goes by Rob. She owns this local record store. She lives somewhere in New York. I don't really know where. Um, if I think back far enough, I could probably figure it out, but it's not a huge plot point, I guess. Is that insulting to say that it's not a huge plot point knowing where in New York they are? I feel like people in New York are very territorial about like what borough and stuff they're from. So that's probably like insensitive of me to say that. So she owns this record store. Um, she her only two employees are seemingly her two best friends, um, this guy named Simon and this girl named Charisse. Um, I say seemingly because um, they kind of have this like really like love hate relationship going on. I feel like their relationship is basically is more so based on um, on just like um, there's a word for it in psychology, um, like um, like proximity basically like. It's a proximity based relationship where they're only friends because they work together and they see each other all the time and they are around each other. If they weren't all in this combined space together, they probably would not be friends in real life in the real world kind of thing. So we start off the show with her um, kind of like having a breakup with this guy. Russell is her ex. Um, they recently broke up. The, the show also kind of goes a little bit out of order. There's flashbacks and there's um, repetitive scenes um, and they kind of like go off one to other people's storylines the sub characters have their own storylines that also have flashbacks so it's a little messy but it's not anything that's um that like hinders the watching experience you just have to kind of pay attention and keep that in mind when you're watching the different scenes because it doesn't always go perfectly in order um usually they will definitely introduce that to you very explicitly so you know you're about to dive into a flashback um but just be warned about that um so she breaks up with russell russell breaks up with her um and then we kind of go down through her dating history and kind of see her repeated patterns, why she is where she is right now in life, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the characters um, are not the most likable characters. Um, Robin in particular, I don't find her to be particularly likable. She's definitely quirky. She's definitely um, a rebel. She's definitely badass. She's definitely, um, she's definitely like not your traditional like girl or girlfriend where she's like okay like yeah like I'm gonna do this and you're gonna do that and this is gonna be a relationship she's definitely more an outside of the box kind of girlfriend which I kind of appreciate and like but I think it's kind of a little bit too on the nose and a little too um her flaws are so highlighted to point out the fact that like hey look here's this flawed character look at her she's flawed she's flawed to the point where it makes her so blatantly unlikable and it makes each poor decision she makes 
um, just that much more annoying. Zoe Kravitz is an amazing actress because she was able to make me not like her. So kudos to her acting ability there. Um, the other characters, I mean, Simon is her, um, again, I say seemingly best friend. I feel like she probably has a better best friend that she could be more compatible with out there in the world, but she's settled for Simon and Charisse. Um, Simon is her best friend who is gay. Um, for much of the show, he's not actually dating anyone. We get to learn about his background history with his previous um, experiences with dating. Um, and then eventually throughout the, se the first scene of the show, he does start dating someone. And it seems to be on, on the up and up, you know? Um, Charisse is definitely very likable, very witty, very sassy. Very I hate saying the word sassy when I'm talking about black women. Like, can we, it's the only word I can think of that's like not, not like a not like a double-edged sword like a backhanded compliment but I really don't want to call her sassy um but she's a bad bitch and she she's ruthless to be quite frank um I like Cherise I probably like her the most honestly she's very honest she's very true to herself um but she also um does have insecurities of her own and I think that it's so important that they highlight her insecurities and highlight the fact that she can be vulnerable you can be this big loud black woman but you can also be so vulnerable and have insecurities and also be able to have your feelings hurt and there are a few scenes in particular where we see her get her feelings hurt and it's not so much what she says it's um the emotion that she portrays on her face and the um just the 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 diversity that she can exude you know so i'm i'm so happy that they did that i'm so happy that they made her multi-dimensional but multi-dimensional on both fronts not just in one direction not the other direction you know what i mean um so i really appreciate her character a lot she brings a lot of comedic relief but everything she says is so real that it's like yeah it's comedic relief but it also holds a lot of truth you know and i appreciate that going back to robin for a second she's unhappy being single but she doesn't really want to date she meets this guy um clyde she meets clyde and he is a cool guy she actually tries to sabotage their first date because she's not feeling it i guess he's too good for her he's too nice he's too quirky he's too boring per se but really what she needs honestly is a boring guy in this point in her life because the other out there characters she's already an out there character on her own i don't think she needs someone like that because it's just going to breed dysfunction which we later learn that she creates dysfunction wherever she goes um but he is a cool guy um she tries to sabotage the first date. She ends up kind of like hanging back longer than usual. They like each other, whatever. But she um, kind of like puts a halt to it being like an emotional or like romantic relationship. And she kind of says like, I'm not ready for that, even though clearly she is ready for that. Cause that's why she went on the date in the first place, but she can't be honest with herself. It's a whole thing. I'm not gonna tell the whole story of the whole show. Robin also has a brother named Cameron, her older brother. He has a wife or fiance. And she's pregnant and she is about to give birth at any moment throughout the entire season at the end of the season she does give birth um her brother is um her brother is an enabler only in the way that any brother would be where he knows hey my sister is effed up but i understand more than anyone why she's effed up because we come from the same and i deal with my stuff in my way and my coping mechanisms so I can't be mad at her for dealing with them with her coping mechanisms so yeah I want to call her out on it from time to time but I'm not really going to hold her accountable to the sense where I'm gonna uh like demand that she changes you know just my opinion this is my this is the whole point of this video is for me to evaluate the characters and the writing and the setting and everything so no shade to the actors no shade to the writers this show is definitely still very entertaining and very enjoyable I don't regret watching the show but I mean every character has their flaws um Cameron is really um I feel like he's surface level interesting but because he's such a sub character and because he pops in and out of certain, certain episodes so quickly they didn't um really develop him past a certain point so we get that he has a real job he has a fiance he's gonna have a baby he apparently loves this girl and has been with her for a while and gives his sister all this relationship advice but then at the end of the day we find out that he's dreading becoming a father so much that he like goes on an alcohol and drug bender um he's just like so wound up and anxious and not ready um so there's problematic behaviors there which are all very like understandable like who wouldn't be nervous 
to like move on into their life and become a father and potentially a husband and yada 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 like it's a huge responsibility and there's no going back from that i get all those things but it seems a little um like oh like all these characters have problems what are we gonna make his problem be ah yes let's make his problem the most obvious problem ever he's about to have a baby so let's make his problem totally surrounded by totally centered around the fact that he's becoming a father let's make his problem drugs and alcohol perfect so there's a lot of dysfunctional characters um but they work well together i think that if one character wasn't in the equation it would throw the whole thing off it's kind of a domino effect where like everyone has their little flaws um and no one is really like fully calling you one out um, i mean sharice calls robin out cameron her brother calls her out um russell even calls her out he comes back into the show at some point russell her ex-boyfriend he goes back to the show they have a few scenes together where they kind of discuss their past and hash things out a little bit he is um dating someone new actually engaged i believe robin put herself into situations knowing that the outcome can only breed disaster um but there's this kind of like cyclical thing happening where she does something and someone else says something and then she does something and someone else says something and it kind of keeps the show going um which i guess every show is like that everyone like does something there's a reaction to that action and the rest of the show is just constant reactions to the initial action that screwed everything up to begin with we kind of see all these relationships like as they're like ending or in their peak we don't really see them from start to finish um except for simon's relationship with his new boyfriend um i do want to highlight that the music of the show is amazing um they have a great soundtrack the entire show even when there's not actually music playing the entire show gives a very um like indie music vibe down to the clothing down to the record store being a major um location for a lot of the scenes um down to like the references a lot of times people will like reference things um based on like music albums that were out during that time or like reference um something bad happening with like a song lyric or something um so i love that about it you guys know that i'm like a huge music fanatic and i love music especially indie music um and it does a good job of like kind of like um picking up different pieces from different genres and making it work um so i'm a huge fan of the music culture in the show um i if there is another season which i'm assuming there will be because it was definitely an open-ended conclusion to the season um i don't think i will be watching it only because it's I feel like it's gonna be kind of more of the same. I feel like I'm in a place in my real life, my personal life, where I am um, growing and maturing in my relationships and becoming more socially aware and becoming more um, dynamic in how I um, treat my relationships. I don't want to like have to relive these things and these patterns that are being shown in the show. Um, but I think as far as the acting, the production, the um everything it's it's a well done show and it does a good job of showing the things it shows is it showing bad things yes but does it show those bad things very accurately and very well yes it does and that i totally totally appreciate the drama definitely had me rolling my eyes but still continuing to the next episode so i couldn't have hated it that much um but i enjoyed watching it i will not be re-watching it i'll probably not be watching any future seasons um, but that's just how I felt and how I perceived the show um, on first consumption. Um, thank you for watching this writer review and stay tuned for another one. Um, let me know if there's any particular shows or movies that you want me to review. It would be nice if it was something that's like I've already watched it. Otherwise, for shows, I'm only going to watch like mini series shows where there's only one season or something like that because I don't want to review a whole show. It just gets too messy. So thank you and let me know if you want me to review anything in particular.